Just kidding. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Never thought I'd make one. She sees a new 40 out here. But, um, but a bunch of things in May. Um, of course, May Day. They're coming up, you know, the workers' holiday in yes. the whole world except for the United States. Uh, here, here. Out at the Bottle House, American Labor Museum on Sunday, Ooh. in uh, just outside of Patterson. I played there 21 of the last 22 years. Uh, the only year I didn't play was when it was canceled, the coronavirus, uh, the, the 2020. And that's the site of uh, many of the rallies at the Patterson so Strike. Big Bill Englund spoke there, Elizabeth Gilby Flynn spoke there, uh, Carl Sandberg spoke there, John Reed documented the strike, a big journalist. And a lot, a lot of people were came to that cause. It went on for about four months. It was a bitter strike. And they lost some strike on uh, the IWW. But, um, but also in May, I think of Utah for this. Uh, he was born on May 15, 1935. And he passed away May 23, 2008, at 73 years old. And he left us so many great songs. But for me, he left me a roadmap to how to make a living as a musician. Something left to know him six years or so of his life, and he was on all the Hail to the Thief albums that we made, and uh, he's represented on the veterans' CDs, the CDs that we made about uh, Until You Come Home CDs, compilations about the cost of war, mostly to those who served, but also some, some songs about the family and collateral damage and just the effects of war. And Utah was just a great, um, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better mentor because even though he lived 3,000 miles away, I could get him on the phone and talk for half an hour if he was busy. And, uh, and uh, he taught me a lot about how this, this trade works and how this is changing. Um, you know, there's very few people make a living as a musician these days, right? I mean, I'm, I'm lucky that I left the, 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 the working world and don't doubt that I was scraping pennies for a few years when I left New York and decided I was just going to play music for a living. But um, I finally made a way to make it work. And part of that is the work I do with music and senior homes and traveling and touring and stuff like that. But Utah wrote so many great songs, and he thought he, he, his mission was to keep alive the IWW, the Industrial Workers of the World, the young, and the stories of the great hobos. He wrote so many songs about the hobos, right? I could sing you some of his hobo songs all night. But this song he wrote called All Used Up, I recorded on the last album. And it was, um, it's a song he wrote about a man he never met. You imagine this is his story. He used to walk past this this single room occupancy hotel in Spokane, Washington, where he met. And he'd see this little old man sitting in the second floor window of his room, um, you know, in a little rocking chair or whatever. And he waved to him every day, and he finally got the old man after about three or four days to wave back to him. He says he looked like he was just waiting to die. He was curling up slowly, going back into the umbilical cord position. And he said, I, I ran to the, they got the guy to wave to him. He went to the clerk. He said, can I go up and talk to that guy on the second floor? And the clerk said, nah, I can't let you up there. And even if I did, he wouldn't want you to come in. And he, he, he's scared of guys like you, you know. Uh, he, he keeps a spike ball handle there behind the door to fend off those ne'er do wells and try to steal his little bit of money and stuff. So Utah never got to meet him, but he went home and he wrote a poem about him. And he wrote this great song about a worker who feels he still has a lot to give, but the rest of the world sees him as all used up. They use up the oil, they use up the trees, they use up the air. 